church had some church today, man. You may be seated. You may be seated. Again, welcome to City Church. Thank you for that awesome worship. Isn't God good? How many of you know that? All the time, he is good. And if we have any teenagers here, you guys are welcome to go over next door. Let's give it up for them. Amen. Amen. Hey, today we start a new sermon series called The Best Summer Ever. And you can't have the best summer ever unless you get rid of some things that are dragging you down. And so today I kept, or all week, I kept praying, Lord, how should I start this? And he spoke to me very clearly. He said, you need to talk on peace because there's a lot of people who are overwhelmed. There are a lot of people who are stressed out. And so I want to talk today looking at Philippians chapter 4. Many of you know it. Starting with verse 14, or 4, sorry, 14, 4, you know. 4 through 9 is where we're going to start. If you're ready, say, let's go, Pastor Dana. Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. No, 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 no. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Let the gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. How many of you are glad that he's near? Do not be anxious about anything. Well, I need to repeat that because some of you have been anxious all week. Can I repeat it? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, oh, whatever is lovely, come on, oh, come on, keep going. If anything's excellent or praiseworthy, yep, think on those things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seed in me, put into practice, and there's that word again, and the God of peace will be with you. Lord, we want peace. We don't want to be up all night worried about something. We want to be able to rest in you. We want to be able to get up every single day and know, Lord, that we have a peace that transcends all understanding, God. And so, Lord, for the one that is worried, the one that's afraid, Lord, I pray you would wrap your arms around them right now, God. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here with us today. Because, Lord, this isn't our church. This is your church, God. This is your hospital for people who need help today. Lord, this is not a place for the perfect. This is a place, Lord, where it's okay not to be okay. And so today, Lord, for the one that's not okay, God, I pray you would do something. Lord, shake them up. Let them know that you're there today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. I tell you what, when my kids were small, I would live in the doctor's office. I mean, yeah, I would live there and live there and live there. If I wasn't there, I was in the ER with them. I had, well, both of them had asthma, but I had one. You would never know it today at the West Point Military Academy. Boy, it's healed. I went right before he, when he was, this is a side note, but right before he was uh, getting ready to go, uh, he said he was interested in West Point. I said, well, son, you got a problem. He said, what's that? I said, well, you know, you grew up having asthma. I don't know. I mean, you got to go through a health screening and everything. And I knew deep down that it would be okay if this is what the Lord had planned for him. And so we go to this asthma specialist, and she said, oh, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen you. Come on in here. I want you to blow in this, and we're going to test and see how you're doing. And they said, are you doing any running? He's like, yeah, I'm doing running. I run every day. Oh, how many miles you run? Oh, okay. And it doesn't bother you? He said, no, not at all. So she sat down. She had tears in her eyes. She said, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, what's wrong? She said, there ain't nothing wrong with him. She said, I took his test results from like back in middle school to now in high school. I said, he's blowing 100%. He ain't nothing wrong with that boy. She said, as far as I'm concerned, there is no report of, of asthma in his son. There is no, there's no, no medicine needed, no steroids needed. And I said, thank you, God, because as a child, I remember both of them. They were sick, and there's only certain medications. Come on, they have parents that they will take. And trying to get them to take the medicines, like, you know, 
you got to pin them down. You got to do everything you got to do. And I thought, what good is it to go to the doctor and get a prescription if my kids don't take the medication? And so I would get them home, and, ma'am, I tell you, I think my son was the worst. And we would pin him down, and he would cry. He spit that stuff right out. Oh, I can't take it. I said, boy, you're going to take it or else. Come on. And then we started bribing. Oh, if you take it, then we'll take you to get ice cream. Right? Oh, if you just take your medicine today, we'll take you out and buy you a new toy. Whatever it took, because I knew it would be a waste to go to the doctor, right, if he, if he never took the prescription to get better. And I feel like as Christians sometimes we're walking around and we're forgetting about the word of the God, which is the prescription. And it's up to us if we're going to be able to apply this to our life. And many of us use it when we get in need. Come on, can I get a witness? We get it when we get in trouble, but I'm talking about every day, putting the prescription into practice, putting it into place so that we can live a life of peace. God doesn't want us walking around puffed up, up all night, tired, grumpy, irritable, chewing people's heads out because we're stressed out about something. And Paul is trying to tell us here in this text, he's like, look, I got the prescription that you need for peace. So today my title is The Prescription for Peace. See, what good is it to say, do not be anxious about nothing when we're anxious as we can be because we're not applying the prescription that he's giving us here. He's telling us what we need to do to have peace. He's telling us what we need to do to to keep our mind right. Because how many of you know that the battle is in the mind? Right? He's telling us what we need to do when storms come our way, when, when problems come, when tragedy comes. He tells us what to do, but it's up to us to take the prescription, come on somebody, and apply it to our life. How many of you know this is better than any antibiotic? Come on. This is better than any steroid that the doctor could give us, right? Or any depressant. Come on. Oh, look. This is better than anything right here. It's the word of God. And Paul is saying, look, I want to write to the church of Philippi, and I want to let them know what they need to do in order to have peace. And so he tells us all things, right? But one thing that he tells us over and over again is rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I got thinking about when I was little and I went to church and there was a song, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Re- and again, I say rejoice. Oh, y'all don't know. That's okay. Just repeat. Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So a couple principles we're going to learn today. The first one is this. It's a choice to rejoice. It's a choice to rejoice. It's your choice when you get up every single day, are you going to rejoice? It's your choice every day when you get up and the kids are misbehaving and running all over the place and driving you crazy and running your grocery bill up this summer. Come on. Yeah, I love when they go back to school. It's like, praise God. Oh, my grocery bill just went down. Lord, help us. But anyway, it's, it's making a choice every day that we are going to rejoice. And Paul is not, it's not like everything's going great in Paul's life when he's writing this. He's writing this from a place, from a a circumstance that does not look very good. He is in a prison cell, and yet he is telling us to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And some of you are thinking, Pastor Dana, How can I have peace and how can I rejoice? Do you understand what's going on in my family? Do you understand what's going on in my workplace and with my kids and with the doctor's report that I just got? How can you tell me that I can have peace? How can you tell me that I can rejoice? And Paul is saying, hey, I'm in a prison cell and I'm telling you, when it looks terrible, when all hell is breaking loose against you, come on, somebody, you can rejoice. And some of us are walking, come on, can I just preach? Hey, I, I, I want to take something and snap it out of some people today to say, hey, stop, stop talking about how bad it is and go ahead and give God praise for who he is and what he means in your life. 
I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. I haven't had a chance to tell you, okay? I'm going to tell you something that happened, and it wasn't me. It was God, okay? But it shook me up, and it changed my life just in the last couple weeks. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to try to do this without crying because, woo. So I, I, the Lord spoke to me a while back. He said, you need to go to ECI. You need to get in there, and you need to minister to these, these prisoners. And I thought, everybody's going to think I'm crazy. I'm a female. I mean, I haven't even, even heard of people going in there to do this. So I kept praying, God, if I just knew somebody, if I could just, I don't know how to even get in there. I don't even know if this is possible. I don't even know what to do. And so then this, this man, he's here today. I ain't embarrassing, but he, I started talking to him about it. And he never said, you can't go in there, or I don't think you should go in there. He said, we're going to do what we need to do to get you in there. He said, I was a warden there for years, 34 years to be exact. And he said, uh, I'm going to go with you. We're going to get in there. They need it. Well, I'm going to tell you what, a year, a year of filling out all kinds of paperwork, a year of, you know what, to try to get in there, and everything you could think of leading up to the night I was to go in and then saying, no, I'm sorry, we didn't know anything about it. And then him saying, oh, we ain't going home to this girl's feet. And that's how I knew it was God. Because anytime, well, come on, anytime you're about to do something for God, you know, when it makes sense, you know it ain't for God, really. Because if it doesn't make sense and all hell keeps coming against you, you know that it is God and that you need to do it. So we go in there and I'm thinking, okay, and, and here I am, you know, worried about what had happened this week or that week, you know, and just kind of down, you know, a little bit. And I'm going in here, I'm like, God, help me, help me. I didn't know what to expect. I'd go in there and before. Before the service even started, they were coming in and going over to their little altar over to the side and praying and weeping before God. And I'm thinking, good Lord, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Some of us can't even get up in time to even come into church. And they got there early so they could spend time at the altar praying. So I thought, okay, it's going to be all right. Then I see these guys up there worshiping. And one guy said, one of the pastors said, hey, that guy up there, you know, God's changed his life. He's our worship leader. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, he wrote a song. And, oh, yeah, and then he started warming up, and he started singing, oh, come to the altar. I said, oh, Lord, we're about to have church in here. So he started playing, oh, come to the altar. Come on. The Father's arms open wide. And so the, they're coming in, you know, and. This particular gentleman that went with me, he said, uh, ain't going to be a seat for him. I said, what do you mean? He said, this place will be packed. He said, they'll be standing in the back because there won't be enough seats. He said, now you just do your thing. I'm just going to sit right here. I said, okay. So about that time, I didn't know what I was allowed to do and not allowed to do. I was like, I'm like, I don't know. Do I lift my hands so I get thrown out because I'm a female? Do they? I mean, I didn't know. but So I called myself, and one particular time, they started worshiping. And when I saw all five people on the worship team up there singing, and I saw guys' hands going up, and I saw tears coming down their eyes, woo, Lord Jesus. I started watching them. I said, these people are rejoicing. And in their circumstances, how many of us, we have all we can do to come in church and lift their hand up? And these are prisoners, some of them in there for life, but yet they are coming, and they made it a choice that they were going to rejoice. And so before you know it, I was hooting, hollering, had my hands up. I said, well, if I get that kicked out of here, I don't know what to tell you. I was hooting, hollering with them, had my hands up, and I thought, oh, Lord, it's on. So I got up there. I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And the more I preached, the more the Holy Spirit began to come, and they were raising their hands, and they were shouting. I said, thank you, Lord. And then the guy said, you want me to close it out? I said, go ahead, close it out. I don't want to step on your toes. Go ahead, close it out. So he started singing, oh, come to the altar. One, two, three, four, five. I was like, all right. Some guy looked at me and said, five, Pastor, five. Six, seven, oh, come to the hands up. All turn, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I kept counting. I didn't tell nobody. Well, I'm like, okay, God, 12, that's not bad, but, you know, I was hoping for a little more. 13, 14, 15, 16, all right, now they're in a circle. 17, 18, 19, I'm like, come on, God, one more, one more, one more, one more, 
I didn't tell anybody I was counting, but I was counting. 20. And they got in a circle. And they started praising God. And they started lifting their hands. And they began to cry. And they were singing. I look, and the security guards that are supposed to be in the hallway are in the doorway praising God with us. I said, good Lord. You're talking about it's a choice to rejoice. It's a choice to rejoice. I wonder, what's your choice today? It's your choice to just come in and sit down? Woo, you thought you were coming for a good sermon today. It's your choice to just come in and talk about how bad your week is. It's a choice to rejoice. And here he is in prison saying, hey, you've got to rejoice. See, we think we only rejoice when we are happy. But let's just be honest. We ain't always happy, are we? Because what we base our happiness on is what is going on around us. Yeah. But how many of you know that there are times in life when you're on the mountain, praise God, And then there's times when you're in the valley. And I'm talking about those kinds of times. I'm talking about those kinds of times where the enemy would like to shut your mouth and tell you you're going through too much. Go ahead and dig your hole and go ahead and die. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. He doesn't know people who actually rejoice when something happens in their life. Come on. Something begins to confuse the enemy when, when all hell is breaking loose and we can just simply look at God and say, God, you're good. God, you're good. You are good. Even though everything else around us does not look good, that we can simply lift our hands up and we can say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know why he repeated it? Because that tells me that it was important for him and wanted us and everybody else in the church at that time to understand and know that how important it is to rejoice in the Lord. So he repeated it. How many of you parents know you have to repeat things quite a few times for your kids to get it or your spouse? Come on. And when my husband tells me to do something twice, I know I better do it. And he knows the same thing. Something about repeating it. It's something about repeating it. And plus what he does. He says rejoice in the Lord always. In fact, I'm going to repeat that again. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say, rejoice. I want to encourage somebody today. The enemy's got you looking at your problem and your circumstance, and let's just be honest, you're not rejoicing. In fact, you're complaining. You're complaining. And he tells us in the next verse, he talks about how we can be gentle, and he says that the Lord is near. And then I got thinking about it, researching a little bit more. And how many of you know sometimes it's not easy to be gentle with people that get under your skin? Come on. I said this wasn't a perfect place, y'all. This is a hospital. Right? It's, it's hard. But what he tells us is not only is it a choice to rejoice, but it's, it's when we start rejoicing in the Lord always, something begins to happen with the people around us who are irritable. Come on. And the people who are complaining, we are able, right, to love on them more so. Why? Because we are making it a choice to rejoice, right? And when you make it a choice to rejoice, something begins to happen inside of you, and you are able to love even the people that are unlovable. Some of you are like, maybe I need to rejoice a little more, right? But it's, 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 it, it helps us. It says the Lord is near. Then he goes on in verse 6 and 7 and tells us, do not be anxious. About anything. Do not be anxious about anything. He didn't say, don't be anxious about some things, maybe other things, maybe not. He says, anything. And I feel like when, when we begin to get anxious, it begins to control us. In fact, we're trying to control something in our life. That's why we're anxious. But we have to be careful because it can get a hold on us. How many of you know that? And so then he turns around, not only do not be anxious about anything, but then he says, but everything, prayer and petition, right? Make your requests known to God. And so I feel like for many of us, it's hard for us to really be able to pray and make our requests known to God because we're holding on to the thing 
that's making us anxious. But if we can learn to release it, then we will be able to receive the promise that God has for us. But we got to be able to release it. But see, a lot of us don't, don't like to release it because then it makes us feel like we don't have control. You know what I'm saying? So we hold on to it, and we walk around, and we're carrying all this stuff, and then we're grumpy, and we walk in church, and the pastor says, hey, how you doing? And you walk right by them and puffed up. Why? Because you're anxious. Some of you didn't sleep last night. You haven't slept in weeks because you're anxious. Paul is like, this is your prescription for peace. And when you feel anxious, you better apply that prescription even more. Because what I have for you is not to be anxious, but if you truly want the peace that surpasses all understanding, right, you've got to understand to take the prescription. And how many of you know it's a process and you've got to be able to apply it to your life? He says, take it to prayer. Can I, can I just go there for a minute? Because I feel like for many of us, We have no problem doing prayer time, but it's a quick one. It's like when you go to Burger King, and I said Burger King because McDonald's have the best fries, but how many of you know Burger King has the best burgers? Well, I mean, there's five guys. I mean, if you want to pay $59.99 for a burger, (laughs) help yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm more for like the coupons that come in the mail for Burger King, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so, so it's like we pull up, and we act like God is like the fast food drive through like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I got to pray today. Huh, I'm going to go to the first window. Hey, God, what's up? Yeah, how you doing today? Yeah. Um, God, it's like this. Like, my kids are a mess, and, you know, I'm trying. It's so hard, and they're just, like, stressing me out, and I'm counting down the days I go back to school, but God, I need help with that. And, God, I really need help in this situation because it's not going the way that I thought. And so, God, if you could help me, that would be great. And I'll see you when I have more time. I'm going to go to the next window. And then we go to the next window, and we're like, Okay, where's my, where's my order? Where's my, God, God where's, my, where's my check? God, God where's, my, where's my healing? God, God, where's my good kids? Well, God, where you at? Where you at? How many of you know, God's not no fast food kind of God. I mean, can you imagine if you went to your partner, like, hey, I need this. How, how you doing? I'll see you. I'll see you later. You never spent any time. What kind of relationship would you have? But yeah, we go to prayer time like it's something with our big long list, and we can just check it off and say, oh, I've been to church this week. Oh, yeah, I prayed this week. But I'm talking about spending quality time with your father so that you can release the junk that some of you have been carrying for so long. And you're so stressed out. It's affecting people around you. You're taking it out on your kids. God bless your man. Hey, you know, because you're so stressed out all the time. He's like, when are you going to learn to take it to me? It's a two-way street, right? You pray, you got to listen. Come on. It's a two-way street. It's spending time with me so that you can release it, so that you can receive the promise of God. So I don't know what your prayer time looks like, but I'm just encouraging you, spend a little more time, will you? Okay? And I got so caught up in this, I want to remind you about point number two that I almost forgot. Stop complaining about it and pray about it. That's what I was trying to say. That's what I was trying to say a while ago, but I got so excited I almost forgot it. But I want to let you know that because when we come to him in prayer, it's not a time to complain. It's a time to release and say, God, this is what is worrying me. This is what I have going on. This is what is keeping me up. God, and God already knows. He's just waiting for you to spend time with him to see if you really trust him enough. And I've learned when, when people complain, it's like they're just saying, hey, It's me over here. I was just hoping you would see me because I'm hurting and I'm bitter and I need help. And so I'm just going to complain about it because I want to make sure someone notices me because I can't take this anymore. And I think sometimes we complain. We don't even realize we're complaining. So I encourage you today, maybe just kind of keep an eye on what comes out of your mouth and, and maybe Maybe even how you look at things. And, and maybe just say, God, I just want to pray about it. When you, when you find yourself kind of coming up a little harsh, come on. Or finding yourself before lunch and you're hangry, not hungry. And you're a little kind of, y'all don't get like that? I do. It's, it's watching what comes out of your mouth and say, God, I, I need to pray more. I need, I need to hear from you more. But not only that, it's giving God thanksgiving. 
It's praising him for what he's done in your life. It's looking back. Thank you, Miss Marianne. It's looking back over your life and the times, right, that you didn't know you would be able to get through, but God showed up and he did something amazing in your life. And that's why I love to see other people rejoice. I love to see other people think back through their life and know that God was good. And even though something happened in their life, that God still showed up and he showed off and he provided everything that you need. And this week, I went to see a dear friend of mine right over here, Dr. Jennifer. And I walked in her house. And the whole wall, when you come in down her little hallway, had all these pictures on it. I said, oh, Dr. Jennifer, this is so awesome. And she took every picture, and she told me about everything. And the whole time she told me about it, she said, oh, this is just to help remember all that God has done in my life, Pastor Dana. Because I look back, and I know that he's been faithful. I know he's been good. See, sometimes we forget when we get complaining. We forget what he's done. We forget where he brought us out. We forget how he's blessed you and blessed your kids and blessed your family, right? We forget that because we get so caught up in being anxious and what's in front of us. See, we get caught up in what is happening around us, right, that we forget what he has done through us. And so I just want to encourage you, if you find yourself anxious today, take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't hold on. Release it. And then the last one today, aren't y'all glad I'm not long-winded? It's great, isn't it? Maybe you should tell everybody else to come to our church. Amen. Uh, number three, where, where, you, where focus goes, energy flows. Heard that saying a while back. I was like, that's awesome. Where focus goes, energy flows. I wonder where's your focus going? Because if you are dwelling on the things that are going wrong in your life or the problems that you have, guess what? There ain't much energy going to be flowing. If it is flowing, it's going to be nothing but a complaining, come on, and a bad attitude. That's not you all, though. You got good attitudes, right? Yeah, come on, till Monday morning. That's right. Come on, talk to me tomorrow morning before I have my coffee. Yep. Where focus goes. So as musicians come forward, I want to ask you that today. Because he tells us, he said, hey, by the way, make sure you reset your thinking. Some of you today need a reset. Need a reset. Because you've been, I I just don't understand why I feel this way. I don't understand. I just don't understand why I can't be happy. I just don't understand why I feel sad. I I just don't understand what's going on in my life. I want to ask you today, what are you thinking about? What are you talking about? Better yet, who's talking around you? Because how many of you know that complaining is contagious? I took my daughter years ago to gymnastics, and uh, she had practice, and I was sitting out there with the other women. And my husband was a great, wonderful person until I went to gymnastic practice. And I heard one lady talk about her husband. And she started complaining. I said, well, um, I was doing pastoral counseling, you know, while I was there. I was like, oh, well, you know, have you talked to him about it? Have you told him how you feel? She said, yeah, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. He just blah, 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 just kept going on. I kept trying to be positive. I'm like, oh, yeah, but I know he loves you. And, like, you know, you can't can't always dwell on that, you know. And then about that time, the other lady started then. Oh, yeah, my husband, you know what he did today. And before you know it, I left, went home, and Micah said, how was your day? I said, And he said, what in the world happened? You know Why? Because I was thinking on the wrong things. I was surrounded by the wrong people. And I had peace going in, but I surely didn't have peace coming out. Maybe today, not only does your mind need to reset, but your friendships need to reset. Ooh, that was a good one. Y'all can get that down. It's, it's the people around you. It's the people you're listening to, the people you're spending time with. I just want you to know that where focus goes, energy flows. I want the kind of energy where I go in places and they're like, wow, she looks so peaceful. <laughs> There's something about her. No, something about how I choose to rejoice. See, it's a choice to rejoice. Anybody can get up and talk about how bad it is or look at all the bills that need to be paid or start doubting God because something doesn't go the way you think it needs to go in your life. But it's saying, God, I release it to you. God, I I know I've been complaining, but God, I need to trust you. I need to bring it to you enough to understand and recognize that you are 
the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are a friend that sticks closer than brother. You are my creator. You're my El Shaddai. You're my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are everything that I need today. So I want to encourage you just to stand to your feet. I told people the first service, I said, you know what? Some people don't like to get out of their seats. too embarrassing in a small church. It's fine. If you need prayer, I'm here. If not, if you're just like with every head bowed and every eye closed, you just want to say, Pastor Dane, I, man, I needed that today. Like, yeah, I need some peace up in my life. Yup, I see that everywhere. And so today we're going to pray with every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's just pray together right now. Father God, we love you. God, we need you. We need you to take every situation that looks so big. God, we need you to take every family issue, every relationship issue today, God, that we can't take no more. Lord, we need to release it to you, God, so that we can stand on the promise that you have for us. And so, Holy Spirit, fill us with your peace. Help our mind. Lord, because we know that's where the battle is. And Lord, it's like the five second rule when the food hits the ground. Hey, the same thing with our faults. As soon as it comes, five seconds, get rid of it. Acknowledging, I'm not thinking on that today. I'm thinking on what's true. I'm thinking what's on noble, what's right. I want to think on the things that God wants me to think on so that I can have peace that transcends, which means that goes above. See, God has peace. They can take you above any problem, above any circumstance that you have in life. God, bless your people that made an effort to come today. God, bless them, Lord. Bless them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet today, God. And give them the peace that they need to get through any storm that comes their way. Lord, I pray as we sing, I speak Jesus, Lord, that we would be able to worship today in Jesus.